Well, if you look at society, basically, uh, it means that uh, the real tissue of a society is the family. And the family doesn't work without marriage and without transmission through the marriage. And basically, if you see in our society, uh, the number of marriages which don't work or that one doesn't make work, there are many reasons for that, I don't want to judge. But basically, it's one of the things which brings uh, disorder into the society. And it's a major, major issue of our times. I think they are a role model and an example for our time also. Uh, because basically a real couple is, is out of time. I mean, it won't change so much. The circumstances will change. So basically, if you think of the way they prepared their marriage, their wedding, uh, by going to Maria Zell uh, and, and uh, uh, preparing themselves for one of the most important moments of their life and that my grandfather said to my grandmother the day before they, they got married that, uh, that famous sentence, now we have to lean one on the other in order to reach heaven together. And that is basically, basically what is marriage. It is also something which is not egoistic. You have to turn it towards another person, which is the children first. But uh, that was a whole plan, plan of life, you know. And, and um, there was a real love. Uh, uh, I can realize that with my, my grandparents. As you know, maybe, my grandmother, when my grandfather died, he was only 34, she dressed in black during 67 years afterwards, just to show that basically she was married once and forever, and that uh, she didn't really only mourn, but it was just an external sign to say that marriage is in front of God and the people once and forever. And, uh, and she truly lived the communion of saints, uh, which is a beautiful thing which we have in our Catholic Church. So basically, she could pray her husband so that he intercedes uh, towards God to, uh, to help her, to help uh, her family, to help the church uh, and whatever one would confide to her as, uh, as a prayer, for a prayer, you know. And, and that, is, that is really what I feel as, as marriage. And she, she loved so much her husband. Um, even, uh, I have a, a, a much younger cousin, I'm the oldest of my generation, and the last is a girl. She's called Katarina from one of my uncles. And the, the year my grandmother died, in 1989, uh, she told my cousin, she said, look, uh, I'm so happy. I'm going to see him again now, and it's 67 years that I'm waiting for that. So I think that's something which is really incredible. Well, the story is quite interesting because I didn't know it until John Paul II told it to us in 1983. We went to Rome for the Holy Year with my grandmother and uh, quite a few members of my family. And he invited us to his private mass. And then he, at the end of the mass, there was a little reception, and he said, I greet the wife of the king of my father. And then he explained that his father, who was an officer in the Austrian Empire, as you know, all the south of Poland was part of the, of the empire, and uh, he had such a veneration for his king, uh, who he considered as a saint, Charles, and basically he called his son Carol in honor of his king. So it's, it's an incredible uh, story. And, and you know, somewhere, and we forget sometimes symbolism in our days. Um, if you look at it, uh, my grandfather died on the 1st of April. Pope John Paul II on the 2nd of April. In the church calendar, my grandfather is written on the 21st of October, and Pope John Paul II on the 22nd. So there's, there's a, a special link there somehow, which I don't really understand in that way, but it's beautiful, yeah. I think it is really important, because in our days, um, you know, a lot is virtual. And if you can't 
touch something, nearly touch it. I mean, if you have somebody who died like my grandmother uh, in 1989, which is not so far away, um, it, is, uh, it is very important to say, look, this couple really lived it, so it is possible to do it. The number of people I meet who say, look, they went through everything, and if they hadn't been able to lean one on the other in a true married spirit, they would have never supported uh, all, the, all the problems they had in their life. Because, in fact, uh, marriage is, is, is sometimes ups and downs also, and, and, and if the two of the persons in the marriage lean one on another and both lean on God, then, then obviously it, you make it work. I, I had a, a professor who was a Jesuit when I was a, a young boy, and he, he gave us boys, it was a, a school for boys only at that time, uh, the following example. He said, marriage is like a ladder. You know, there are two vertical bars, that's the husband and the wife, and then there are horizontal bars. And because they're the vertical bars, you look at each, each another and you love yourselves. But then every day you have to step up, you have to try and step up a bar. And the higher you get, the closer the bars get and the closer you get to God. And in fact, I found that beautiful. And I never forget, I was 16 more or less when, he, when, when that priest told that to me. And I think it's a beautiful example. It is, there are two things. You, you can say something to, to children, but if you don't do it, it has no weight. So first you have to be examples yourself. Uh, don't tell a child, go to church. Say, come with us to church. Go say your prayers. No, come with us and pray. And it is, it is today, especially, a work of every day, every minute, I would say nearly every second. Uh, you can't let anything go. You know, when I was young, and, and I'm a little bit older than you are, um, the parents would say something, the church would say the same thing, the teacher would say the same thing, and the laws in the society would go the same way. So it was fairly easy to educate a child within the faith. And now I'm speaking about the, year, the 50s. Huh? I mean, for, I'm speaking for Western Europe, and, and uh, basically. And now, Sometimes you have the parents say something, the teacher in school will say something else, the society will surely say something else, and in some cases even the church. So it is the parents who really have to take, take the whole thing on to start with. And there's a lot of speaking to be done with the children. In the old days, a father would say to your children, it's like that, and there was no discussion. Today, you have to sit with your children nearly every day and say, look, this is it. It's because this, 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 do you understand? You have questions and things like that. So you have to go back and forth very much. And with my wife, we decided very quickly to do that. We were, some people would say strict, I would say exigent with the children, uh, and maybe sometimes very exigent. But at age 22 or 25, two of the children came back to us and said, thank you for that. And that's somewhere where you think, okay, we didn't do it totally wrong. I know I made some things wrong, everybody, everybody does, but we tried every day to, to develop faith. We prayed every day together. There's a saying in English, uh, who prays together stays together. So that's for the parents already, but for a family it counts also. The poor people, because uh, they've missed something uh, absolutely essential. Uh, because if they say that, they don't want to engage really, and not take most of them. I can't judge everybody, but uh, on two levels. First between the couple, and then towards the love one should give to the third part, which is the children. Uh, within the marriage, you take a very, very strong engagement. If you look at the formula of the sacrament, you mustn't forget it's a sacrament. Uh, it's a very, very strong engagement. And, and those who say it has no value, it can be, uh, without judging, it can be because they want to say, okay, I want to live it in an egoistic way, uh, because I don't want any engagement which will tie me down, uh, uh, block my, the, the life I want to uh, live otherwise. You know, if you take the engagement in a marriage, you cut off 
for yourself many other things which are maybe legitimate to do, but which you won't do because you have a much bigger priority. And, and in our days, uh, people don't want that. Many people don't want that responsibility. And sadly enough, uh, from people who are very prominent, they have the bad example. So they say, okay, if this president does that, why shouldn't I do it, you know, and, and, and so and so on and so on. So it's, it's not easy for some people to decide, uh, okay, I, I agree, marriage is important. And then the next step, it's not only important, I want to really live it and, and take the full responsibility for this engagement. I, uh, thank you for this question. We, our last son, our eighth child, is called Joseph. So, so basically we have a great devotion for St. Joseph. And, and we have in our chapel, uh, sculpted by South Tyrolians, a very beautiful wooden uh, saint family. So, uh, if, you, if you look at the role of Saint Joseph in the Evangelists, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, because uh, his obedience to God, uh, without sometimes understanding the things, is, is such an example. And at the same time, uh, his, his purity, uh, in, in, in the marriage, uh, what the Jews call Nazir, he, was, he made the vows, uh, and, and it's, it's really an example. Now, you can go much further, if, I, if you read books like uh, Anna Katharina Emrich, you can see the role of Saint Joseph, and that he was such a good father. And uh, I think the Holy Family is an example uh, for, for everybody. And, not only St. Joseph, but the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that's where I, I, I always think of my grandmother also, in a way, if I may, if I dare to do that, that comparison. She lived as the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the steps that a woman can have in the life. She was a young girl, she was engaged, she was married, she had children, she was widowed, like, like with St. Joseph, and uh, she, my grandmother wanted to become a nun. I think you can see in the Holy Family, in any family, an example. And Saint Joseph is the example of the father uh, and, and the, the, the authority in a family. Uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary wouldn't have done anything against him or without him. And, and I think, uh, as for other couples, but this is the couple, uh, we, we, we have to turn to them, especially today.